Hello and welcome to Jessie Bear Book Club. Today we are finally getting around to reviewing Shogun. I watched this TV show, I would say a few months ago, and I wrote the review of the TV show, but I held out on recording it because I wanted to read both the Shogun books. And they're rather big books, so this review is going to be partly based on the TV show, partly based on the books, and a comparison of them both. So, let's hope we all win an Emmy and get ready for a very long video. I'm not as well versed in Japanese history as I am in European history, but I was super excited to watch this show for that exact reason. The first episode was super dramatic. Suicide, baby murder, people being boiled alive. I was hooked. John Blackthorne, played by Cosmo Jarvis, is an odd character, threatening one minute and bowing to people the next. I couldn't get a read on him. Blackthorne in the books is much more nuanced and plans strategies long term. He also looks nothing like Cosmo Jarvis and is blonde and half Dutch. I also feel like Blackthorn in the books is much more intelligent than Blackthorn on the TV. In episode two, the plot really starts to unfold more and you get a better picture of the Game of Thrones everyone is playing at the Shogun court, especially the Portuguese church. The costumes in this show are to die for, especially all the kimonos worn by Mariko, who is played by Anna Saoui? If I pronounce any Japanese names wrong, I'm so sorry, but Mariko is so amazing. The way she glides about is to die for, and I think they did a very good job putting this character on screen. She is exactly the way I would have imagined her from reading the book. Unlike Blackthorn. The third episode of this show is action-packed and a good change of pace. In this episode, John Blackthorne really comes out of his shell, and I decide I like him as a character. I still prefer the book version, but that's just me. The sex jokes were very good. The pillowing and offering up casual buggery really made me giggle, and they translated that actually very well from the books and the conversations that go on there. Of course, I think the book is funnier, but they did capture the essence of it in this show. I also really enjoyed the banter between Blackthorn and Rodriguez, played by Nestor Carbonell. The banter is so funny, and the way they dislike each other and like each other at the same time. Frenemy vibes. Episode 4 is filler, but it's well done. The Eightfold Fence should be renamed The Fence of Sexual Tension. And I think they play up this Eightfold Fence a lot more in the TV show than they ever mention it in the book. So that's something. I don't think it's a bad thing. I just thought it was an odd way to go when there's so much else in the book that's so brilliant. Blackthorn is training men to use cannon and shocking everybody with their accuracy. But what is more shocking is the fact that he now holds a place of power within Japanese society, be it Hatimoto and has been given a consort, but he is more interested in Mariko. I'm really glad they didn't make Blackthorn's consort ugly the way she is in the book, because she is more sympathetic when she's pretty, which is a horrible thing to say, but that is Hollywood all over. Episode 5 really spices up everything with the return of Mariko's husband Buntoro, and the arrow scene where Mariko nearly dies had my heart thumping out of my chest like a drum. Finding out Mariko's backstory was really cool, and I thought they did it well in the TV show, but we could have done with some flashback scenes. The book definitely gives it a bit more detail. The earthquake scene was over the top, and slightly predictable, but it did work. The CGI wasn't great though. It was definitely more dramatic reading that in the book, the way that they are swallowed up by the earth one by one and the getting the swords out after but they're all twisted and then Blackthorn offering up his swords was really good but hands down the drinking contest knocks all the cultural differences back into full focus 
as well as What Happens to Old Gardener. It's very sad in the TV show, but in the books it is devastating. In episode 6, Ochiba is back. This has all been building up to meeting her, and she is so cold and calculating. I love it. True evil queen vibes. However, I think Book Ochiba is a lot deeper. You understand that she put herself at risk to conceive an heir for the Taiko, which is very important about her character, and her fear of Toranaga is deeply rooted in how she conceived her heir. No spoilers here, but definitely read the books just for that. The brothel scene in episode 6 was very sexy in a dark, twisted way, and I felt sorry for Blackthorn and Mariko, but understood why it had to happen. In the books, again, this is completely different. Mariko feels like she is giving Blackthorn a gift by taking him to the brothel. So, seeing this in context with the book, I can understand why someone wouldn't like it. It works. I'm glad I actually watched the TV show before reading the book, because I don't think I would have enjoyed it the other way around. Episode 7, again, was filler, and in hindsight, this is the worst episode of the entire series. This episode was a very slow builder, with lots of rain and fog, and the fog was definitely overused this episode. Toranaga's brother portraying him was predictable and slightly different to what happens in the book, and Toranaga's flashbacks, though, were so good. I wish we'd got more of that actually in the book. The climax of Toranaga's heir trying to kill his uncle and dying by accident in the pond was shocking. But this doesn't happen in the book, so I kind of feel like episode 7 is pointless now and should just be erased. When I was reading the book, I kept waiting for this scene to happen where Toranaga's heir tries to kill the uncle, and when it didn't happen, I was kind of annoyed that they had added this into the TV show because it's pointless. The book has enough storyline. Damn Disney making things dramatic. Episode 8 was incredibly shocking and really got me in the feels. Hiro Matsu committing seppuku broke my heart and then discovering that this was actually an elaborate plot by Toranaga to break the hold of the council. Oh my god, brilliant TV. And Blackthorn's crew turning on him was predictable, but I'm gonna say it right now, none of this happens in the book. Hiromatsu, Iron Fist, never commits seppuku at this point in the book, and Blackthorn, even though he is now disgusted by how dirty his crew are, still looks after them. So again, an episode I'm glad I watched before I read the book, otherwise I would have been incredibly annoyed. This being different from the book doesn't take away from the fact this is brilliant TV, and the books by James Clavell are a little bit wordy. He does tend to take a page to describe something that needs 10 words, so I do understand that changes have been made, but again, I'm really glad I watched the TV show first, because if I had read the books and then watched the TV show, I would be very disappointed. Episode 9 of Shogun is honestly the most dramatic TV show I have watched in years. Mariko's fight with the guards, and then nearly committing seppuku, then to be exploded merely hours later, has red wedding vibes written all over it for shock value. At this point in the TV show, though, I had absolutely no idea what Toranaga's plan was, and I felt just as in the dark as Blackthorn. That is because this plays out completely differently in the books, and you have a full understanding of what Toranaga's plan is the whole way through. And the TV show messed around with Iron Fist and Mariko interchanging some of their behaviours. They also mess around with Toranaga's heir, and change that storyline. So this is why the TV show feels a bit convoluted. It's still good TV, I just don't think the plot for this last bit in hindsight is there. Great shock value, but 
they should have made it a bit more cohesive the way it is in the book. Episode 10 of Shogun feels really anticlimactic, apart from Blackthorn's consort scattering her son and husband's ashes, I didn't feel much this episode, and again, that is completely different in the books. She goes away to commit seppuku. Tornaga's master plan was actually very simple in the end, divide and conquer to become a shogun, which is not what's going on in the books. But what on earth was going on with the Blackthorn flashbacks to him being in England in bed ancient. I really hope we get a season two of Shogun. I know there isn't a follow-on book by James Clavell, and this is probably a standalone miniseries, but I could do with a bit of clarification going forward with this series. And I honestly feel there is enough interest in this series that they could make a season two. Maybe they could lift some storylines from James Clavell's other books based in Japan. I know they're set in different time periods, but I'm sure there is a workaround in there somewhere. My final thoughts on this series, Shogun, compared to the books. There is not enough Toranaga in this TV show. In the books, you really get a full understanding of the man with lots of POVs of the way he thinks. But in the book, he is almost sidelined to Blackthorn and Mariko's love affair. There is definitely more loving going on in the books between Mariko and Blackthorn, but I can take or leave that. There is not enough plot for the TV show. And I think that's because the books are so slow moving, they had to amp things up, which of course you need in TV. But I think that messed up the overall Toranaga plot with the regents. There is also not enough of the Catholic Church in this TV show. In the books, they are a massive presence. At one point, they nearly burn Blackthorn alive and he just narrowly escapes. There is also a lot more, you know, Mistress of Whispers things going on with the madam, who eventually gets her brothel and establishes the idea of geisha. So, there is not enough plot for this TV show. It doesn't take away from the fact this TV show is amazing and has its own really great moments like Iron Fist Seppuku, but Toranaga's heir dying in a pond seemed a little pointless. They could have done something much better with that. They could have done the whole scene in the book where Toranaga takes his heir aside and threatens the lives of his children. That would have played out much better to me. And the son having to prove his loyalty by being willing to give up his children, that would have been better than a weird death pond thing. The opening credits are also trying to be Game of Thrones. Does anybody else see this or is it just me? The TV show did get me really excited to read the books and I started them almost straight away after finishing the show. The show definitely overuses the rain and fog machine. I know this is probably accurate to Japan and where they are, but it did make me feel very snuggly and put me to sleep. Mariko dying after her final night with Blackthorn was romance level 100 heartbreak. They are so cute together, and I actually think this is one point that is better in the TV show than in the book. One thing that annoys me now, having read the book, is Hujiko, the consort, becoming a nun. That was kind of cruel. She deserved happiness and maybe a baby with Blackthorn. But then when I read the books, that's all kind of covered and she understands that her sense of duty to her first husband is more important than being a consort to Blackthorn. And it's kind of wrapped up quite nicely. I know what they did with the nun thing and how they swapped characters in and out to make that happen. But Hujiko in the TV show is a lot more sympathetic than Hujiko in the books, weirdly. I give Shogun the TV show eight and a half out of 10. It is very good with minimal filler, though I did feel let down by the final episode. I really wanted a big battle scene after so much talk of war. But I know that isn't in the books now since reading the books. 
the CGI in this show isn't always believable and some of the rain and fog stuff was overdone. IMDb gives Shogun 8.8 .8 out of 10 and I know it's been nominated for so many awards so everybody else loves it as well and after reading the book I give the books, both of them together, I'll clump them into one, I give them 8 out of 10. There is too much boat talk, especially in book one. If I was going to say, if I was going to divide the books up, I would give the first book of Shogun a 7 out of 10 and the second book of Shogun a 9 out of 10. If you're into long haul political dramas with lots of intrigue, Game of Thrones style, I would highly recommend these two books for you. But if you are not a long book intrigue person, they would probably bore you to tears because I even had moments where I was going, will they please hurry up and get to the next scene? Leave me a comment if you have read the Shogun books and leave me a comment with what you thought of this TV show and if it deserves all the awards because I actually think it does, even though I was nitpicking. There is an older version of Shogun, my stepdad was telling me, from I think the late 70s or early 80s, I need to look it up, and I might watch that and review that on here as well, and then we can do a comparison. What do you guys think? Leave me a comment below with your thoughts. And do you think there'll be a second season of Shogun? I think there might be. Disney love a good cash-in on a popular TV show so I can see it coming. Or they might just go out and buy some more James Clavel books and make one of those. Who knows? Until next time, karma is karma. Bye!